Hi everybody, welcome back to another video. It has been a while since I have released any content over here and I'm so excited to bring you a video today about my trip to the Fountain Pen Hospital in New York City. It is a place that I've been wanting to visit for a while now and I finally got there. Um, I was in New York to visit my son a little while back for his 24th birthday, which is crazy. I am going to do a little vlog style with you, introduce you to the store, I'll show you what I picked up and then we're gonna meet back here and I am going to show you everything that I bought that day. All right, we just arrived at Grand Central Station. We're gonna go eat. And then I am going to take a train to the Penn Hospital. We'll see how that goes. Lunch. <laughs> we are checked in at our hotel and we're just like a 10 minute walk away from Grand Central. So we're gonna walk back and hop on a train to Warren Street where the Penn Hospital is. And I think I'm gonna buy an Estabrook today. I'm pretty excited. I have a vintage Estabrook. Um, but I don't have an SD, so I think that's what I'm going for. We'll see when we get there. And I have two pens that need repair. So let's go. Single car, I'll just buy, I'll buy these for a couple rides. We just got off the subway and we are like a three minute walk. Don't mind the sirens in the back, but it's beautiful. The rain kind of cleared and it's nice cool air. So excited. Little construction going on out here. Here we go. Okay. This is the Monte Grappa Elmo. So pretty. I like this color, but I think I like the medium nib. I think I'd have more fun with the medium. I think we'll use some parker. Hmm. All right, now I am going to take a look at the Esterbrook SD. Let's see what that is. Twisties. That's only 50 bucks. Although the Oktoberfest is on sale, that's a really good deal. It's called Cover Sea Green, okay. That's so like that one I can get to a box. That. Okay, I have to get a New York ink, so I think this will work for me. They have so much for so press, and I need a new Rodia. Marvin's been awesome. <laughs> He's helping me out. This is just beautiful. This is the original store. This is very large. That's the first shop that was a few blocks from here. Back in 46. This was? Yeah. That's, that's my boss's father and grandfather. They started the business. I love it. 
having fun. I'm having my own pen show. That's actually the, the, <laughs> so important, you know? I am now trying the Lamy 2000. Well, it's a little more than I than I guessed This is 279. Marvin talked me into the Lamy 2000. <laughs> I couldn't help myself. <laughs> he couldn't. He couldn't. I, I love that pen. I love selling that pen. I'm an easy sell, as my husband knows. You, you weren't that easy. No. <laughs> There's Steve, one of the owners. This is the damage. And below it is the subway station. Oh. We're by the 9 11 memorial. Didn't even realize how close we were. Ants our tour guide. This mall is insane. Yeah, Christmas must be so much fun yeah. here. Christmas time. This little lavender drink, it doesn't suck. Um, <laughs> anyways, we're having a great time. What is it? I'm, I'm gonna cut it in half. I'm a little skinny, have the whole thing at once. There's it. no way I would eat that. Ooh. Jay, you're nuts. We have hot. What were you I can't believe you'd eat that. I don't know why would eat that. What did he expect? Ooh, that's really hot. <laughs> Baby, that's too much. So we got this thing called a dry bowl and we just added a bunch of food to it. Oh my gosh, that is hot. Jay, <laughs> crazy man. I love it. This is called leftover fried rice, so good. Nothing other than the angular. Fried rice. That is actually wicked hot. Mm. How are you doing, yeah? I'm so good. I'm having a great time. This is great. Where are we again? Mala Project. <laughs> I keep forgetting. Happy birthday. Thank you. Happy birthday to my baby. Woo! He's my That's baby. My baby. Those He's are my 24. parents. He's my He's our first. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. You ladies are lovely. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank you. Thank you. Happy birthday, Yes. Yeah. We love you. And we're so proud of you. What are we eating? I think these are steamed and these are fried. Maybe I should have gone all fried, but I was kind of intrigued to try the steamed ones. This is supposed to be a marshmallow. This is almost like a- Those cinnamon. are better than you would think. Really? Yeah. Oh, they don't feel good. I'm going for these, obviously. They're very good. It's almost like a cinnamon bun frosting. So good. Oh my God. Love you, Ab. Yeah. My... Is it? I gotta get the lights. You know? I know, I know. No, it's uh... Big home town. <laughs> <laughs> Antoine. Yes, make it all Miss Jade. Ah, and I hope you enjoyed that portion of the video and catching a little glimpse of my trip to New York City. I'm always happy when I am visiting New York. The last time I went to New York City, I visited Yoseka Stationery, and I have a great video on my trip there. It is my personal mission to get to every stationary pen store in the city. So every time I go back, I plan to visit a new spot. And conveniently, my son now lives in Hoboken, so we have an excuse to go to New York pretty frequently. What was so nice about this trip is being able to try the pens. I started my fountain pen journey in September of 2023. So I'm relatively new, but if you know me, you know how hard I go into my hobbies. And I've just been consuming as much content about fountain pens as I possibly can. It's a great escape for me. It takes my mind off of my day job, which is a full-time reseller slash thrifter YouTuber on a different channel called Lori's Boston Found. But I find that when I'm talking about pens or watching videos about pens or journaling, I am just taken to a different place. I don't know what it is. I did not see this hobby coming, but I love it so much. And I'm so grateful for this community and the joy that fountain pens have brought me. Being who I am and just the way that the world is right now, we consume a lot of information through YouTube. So everything I learned about fountain pens was learned through watching YouTube videos, watching hauls, reviews, the pen cast, anything, anything I can get my hands on. I 
have been watching. And you can hear how wonderful a pen is, but until you actually hold it and write with it, it's really hard to decide if it's going to be the right pen for you. And I've made a lot of purchases. Some have been better than others, but I was just so excited to be in a store and see all of these pens that I've seen reviews on or heard about or wanted to explore more in person and write with some of them. Some um, I wrote with like the Monte Grappa Elmo. That was a beautiful pen. That was never even on my radar. I just loved that pen in store and it wrote really well. In hindsight, maybe I should have picked that up because I ended up getting the Lamy 2000 and a second Esterbrook and I went in with a budget and I blew the budget, which is not untypical for me. So I think it will be really fun today to show you the pens that I picked up, the ink that I grabbed, and I'm going to share with you the two pens that I brought to the pen hospital for repair. Uh, Marvin did not end up like taking these in for a repair. He had this little square. I don't know if it was mesh, like a little metal mesh or whatever. And he just kind of pressed the nib lightly in a few different spots. And both of them seemed to write better. He's like, they're both fine. You just needed a little tuning. This is the Mont Blanc Noblesse. Marvin really liked this pen which made me feel special because I just picked this up because it was a really good price secondhand. I've been buying a lot of pens secondhand and having so much fun just hunting for great bargains. So I have a video coming out where I'm going to share with you my entire secondhand pen collection. A couple of the pens that I found secondhand have been such an incredible value, so I can't wait for that video to come out. Marvin spoke very highly of this gold nib. It's a very thin, pen, you know, compared to like, this is an oversized SD that I got for Mother's Day that I'll just talk briefly about. I have a Mont Blanc red in here and it writes really smooth um, and it writes better since Marvin worked his magic. The other pen that he tuned for me is this Visconti Venus, which was a very early purchase. It was one of the first pens that I spent some money on and this is one of the most disappointing pens in my collection. I ended up getting the Homo Sapien Lava in the ash white, and that writes like a dream. That is a total grail pen. I also am learning that I like a wet writer, a, more, a medium nib, and this is a fine nib, and it's a pretty dry writer. So if you have the right ink in here, it works well, but I feel like this pen needs a lot of tinkering, and it just hasn't been one that I've reached for, but it's really beautiful and I love that about it. And then I dropped it and there's a tiny crack which you can't see but the bottom part fell out. There was a point where I was just like ready to throw this out the window. I'm getting along better with it now but I think I might end up selling this. I'm definitely getting to the point now where I have to start thinking about letting go of some things. Let's talk about what I picked up that day starting with the Botanical Garden SD in a medium nib. I love this pen so much and one of the reasons I went for this. Again, I went in knowing I wanted an SD, but I didn't know which one, and I didn't think I was going to walk away with this one because I tend to not love multicolored pens, although that's what SDs are all about, and I've been really loving them. So I've been adding a lot more color to my collection and having fun with it. But what I loved about the Botanical Garden is that you can use so many different colored inks in here, and I've really enjoyed exploring inks lately, so I wanted to get a pen that I could explore a lot of inks with and it would work. And I didn't really have like a springy green pen. So this is the direction I went in. I tend to migrate towards a lot of browns and earth tone, earth tone colors. Like these are more me, like the Kaweco Student in Jazz. I have the Banu Ice Caramel Latte. This is a Goulet exclusive, one of the first pens I invested in. Love this color. I love the Olive Kaweco. I love these tones. So this was a little bit of a branch out for me, but it writes so beautifully. Uh, so I was so excited about this. It does have that little um, cap that you have to push in. I am the least technical person, so I never have the right words, but you kind of push it in and twist, and that keeps your nib nice and wet. So this pen wrote like a dream. I ended up getting Emerald de Chavour, this Jacobin ink to go with it, and it is beautiful. This ink is just gorgeous. I knew I wanted to get this ink. So many people talk about this ink, and it was recently featured in a Goulet pen video. And so I knew going in that this was one that I wanted to get. The bottle is so gorgeous. This was beautiful. And I hesitated to buy inks because 
I can get really good deals on inks if I shop around. I really wanted to focus on pens here because I could actually try them out. But of course, I could not leave without ink. I ended up getting three bottles. So I bought this for my botanical garden pen. And this is so beautiful. But then, as you saw in the, the vlog portion, this Oktoberfest was about $50 less than I had seen it in a lot of places. I wasn't in the market for this. I didn't plan on getting two. But when I saw this, I loved the color. And I was thinking in the fall, this will just be such an incredible pen. So this is Oktoberfest. Marvin talked me into getting the silver toned clip. He's like, I just think it's interesting. I think it provides a little contrast, but I tend to like gold and most of my Esther Brooks have gold. All of them do. So I was like, oh, but I branched out a little bit and I got a fine nib, which writes very nicely. This is my little growing Esther Brook collection. Um, and I'll talk more about these in different videos, but this is a vintage Esterbrook J that I got secondhand. I recently got the um, lilac, and I also bought the collaboration, which I have a separate video on, the, the new uh, nebulous plume, which is a collaboration between Ferris Wheel Press and Esterbrook, and it is gorgeous. Very, very bright. I'm trying to like come to terms with how bright it is and how much money it was because it writes so beautifully. I just can't get enough of Estes lately. The color that I got to go with the Oktoberfest was from the same maker as the Emerald de Chavour. These are the boxes that they come in. And this color is called Cornaline d'Egypt. Sorry for the total botched pronunciation. It's beautiful. And it's a really nice pumpkin color, and this has a lot of shimmer in it. So when you see the bottle, there's a lot of shimmer here on the bottom. So before I ink up my pen, you definitely want to, you know, move that ink around so you can get the beautiful shimmer throughout. These bottles are just so gorgeous. I love the little wax seal detail. Um, so that coordinated so nicely with this. Jacquerbean Paris. These are beautiful. A little pricey on these, but I was caught up in the moment. I was so excited to be there. My SD collection now ranges from extra fine to broad. Um, I'm not crazy about the extra fine nib. I just feel like when I get a really colorful pen, I want to see a lot of ink coming out of it. When I think of an extra fine nib, like my Pilot E95S is an extra fine nib. It's beautiful. It writes really smooth. I'm not gonna put crazy colors in there. I'll probably go with ox blood or writer's blood or like a black. And it's just very consistent and smooth. When I look at an SD pen, I just feel like it is screaming to have beautiful colors come out of it with shimmer and sheen. And I wanna show that off. So I think it's the SD specifically that I'm not crazy about the extra fine nib. It writes beautifully and I got a really great deal on this and it's beautiful. But I think I'm going to swap out the nib for this and probably put in a broad or a medium at least because, or maybe I could get one of the fun Esterbrook nibs. Esterbrook nibs you can swap out, which I think is so cool. And this candy one is the oversized SD that I got for um, Mother's Day at Apple Boom. And this came with a fine nib, but these are a little harder to come by and they only had one left in the store. So I've been loving Estes lately. Also, while I was there, I decided to get a Twisby um, Diamond 580, another pen that I've been eyeing. I have a Twisby Eco in the rose gold with the white with the rose gold trim and a fine nib. But again, this is a demonstrator. I wanted a lot of color to come out of it. Marvin encouraged me to try a stub nib. The ink that I decided to put in here was this beautiful Ferris wheel press ink, and this is called Central Park Green. I loved their little New York series that they had in the store. So this is such a fun combination, and I do really love the facets on the Twisby Diamond 580. The stub nib has been so much fun to write with. The finial is red. This is a really pretty pen. If you're just getting started with pens, I think Twisbees are so fantastic. You can get the Eco for around $30, and this was $50 for the Diamond 580. That has the facets and a little bit, a little bit more intricacies than you see in the Eco. 
but I like them equally. I don't think that, I think the Diamond 580 is that much greater. There's a little more weight to it, um, but I like it. I just got the clear so that I could put any colors in here um, and I wouldn't be limited by the color of the cap. And then, of course, when I was checking out, I wanted to try the Lamy 2000. I've heard so much about the Lamy 2000. I bought the Vanishing Point and I will say that I still prefer the Vanishing Point to the Lamy 2000. I just love the matte finish. I really am drawn to how a pen looks on the outside as well as how it performs. These both perform really well. Both incredibly consistent pens. I just think this is a more masculine pen. It's a timeless style and it writes beautifully and Marvin encouraged me to get the fine over the medium nib and it's funny because he knew I was enjoying writing with a medium nib but he got this and he's like you're gonna enjoy the fine in that and he was right. So I really like this because my vanishing point is a medium nib so I like to mix it up. If I'm going to buy a variety of pens or if I'm going to buy like the SD in several different patterns, I like to at least mess around with the nibs and try different nibs. And then, you know, depending on my mood or where I'm writing or the zone that I'm in in a particular moment, I will pull out the pen that speaks to me in that moment. That's kind of how I roll with my pens. I love that this has an ink window, even though it's not the greatest. Some of my really expensive pens, like my uh, Homo sapiens doesn't have an ink window and I, I just appreciate it. I appreciate the practicality of it when you can see how much ink is in there even though it's a little cloudy. I love the nib on this. I love the design is sleek and modern. I love that it's not so crazy. You know like if I was going out to a cafe I don't know that I would bring this pen with me. I would probably bring my more cafe looking pens to a cafe but this is just one you can bring with you anywhere and just super reliable. Here's the thing and I've never heard anybody mention this before. When I close it I feel like there's a little bit of a like a scratchy sound. Is it just me? Is it just this pen or is it is it just me? Okay so listen ready? Let me try to get in focus here. It's like a, I don't know. It's just like this, it's almost like this friction that I feel as opposed to a pen like the Pilot Prera. That is so satisfying when you cap it. There are some other pens that just cap so nicely. Even this, it's just like a, it's just a nice little click. This is not a twist off. This is just a cap on, which is nice for convenience, but I just don't love the sound. It feels like it's scratching as it, as it comes together. I don't know, maybe it's me. Um, and I definitely paid a little bit more for this. Being in New York, the tax in New York City is a lot. There, it was definitely a little bit of a splurge to be there. And that's the hard thing. You wanna support small businesses and this place was amazing. I will definitely go back there. But some of the prices are more expensive and then you're paying taxes in New York City on top of being there. So I know I could have gotten a better deal on this, but Marvin loved this pen so much and he really convinced me. And the Lamy store is in New York City, so that's one of the places that I want to visit in the future. And so I kind of wanted to reserve purchasing this for another trip to New York but I'll, I'll just have to get something else when I go to the Lamy store. Uh, I would really love this pen in the brown. I'm much more of a warm pen person, and I know that the brown one was limited edition and it's astronomically expensive in it. I just don't think I love this pen enough to invest in the brown one. But if you want to trade, I have a black one. But eventually, if I see it at a pen show or on the secondhand market one of these days and it's a good deal, I will grab it. But these are all of the pens that I got while I was there. I also got a larger Rhodia notebook. I like this large size Rhodia just for testing out my pens. And that is everything that I got in New York City on this trip. It was quite a splurge. So to recap, I got the Esterbrook SD Botanical Garden with the gold tone clip with a medium nib. Love it so much. I also got the Esterbrook Camden in Oktoberfest with the silver tone clip in a fine point, fine nib. I got the Lamy 2000 in a fine nib. 
and I do have oxblood in here right now and it writes so smooth and I do love this nib I mean this is so unique it's got the little hooded nib there it's beautiful it's really a cool pen. I have a feeling that this pen will just grow on me through the years because it's so consistent and it's such a great writer. I just think I'll just continue to love it. And lastly, I got a Twisby Diamond 580 in clear with a stub nib, a 1.1 stub nib. And in here I have the Ferris Wheel Press Central Park Green. I think when I go back to New York, I'll get one of the other ones. The, the Grand Central Station was more of like a like a brighter green and I didn't like it as much but then what was the other ink so the other one was called lights on Broadway and it was a really bright pink and I didn't get any pens that day that were suitable for that color but this oversized SD would look great with that ink I have bought so many inks I definitely need to join some sort of an ink swap I want to get some you know sample containers and just make multiple samples because I just think it would be really fun and it would curb the amount of inks that I purchase and I've had a little problem lately so one of the other things that I meant to bring downstairs because all of my um, journaling stuff is upstairs but the Fountain Pen Hospital also gave out a uh, magazine and it was just like a catalog with all of their current pens and it, I, it's so beat up already because I take it all around the house with me and I read about it. It's, it's just so nice to have something that I can hold and look through. Gold Spot Pens also sends their um, catalog magazine and I appreciate that because it's just, it's so nice to have something tangible to look through other than being online and looking through things. I can't say enough about the staff at the Fountain Pen Hospital, especially Marvin. He has my heart. He was so sweet. The staff is just so knowledgeable. They have been there forever. They are an institution in New York City. And all of the content that I had seen online about the Fountain Pen Hospital, you know, trying to review things before I went there, was pretty dated. So I wanted to get in there and see what it was like now. It's such a joy to be in the presence of other pen people because sometimes I feel like a weirdo, like around my family or just even to myself, like, why do I like pens so much? But I do, and I'm embracing it fully. <laughs> and I love to come to my channel here and talk to other people who feel the same way about pens as I feel. So thanks for coming along and checking out this video. If you enjoy videos about fountain pens and journaling, um, be sure to subscribe to my channel. Hit the thumbs up if you had fun. Definitely check out the Fountain Pen Hospital. If you get on their mailing list, they have discounts on inks every Wednesday. They're also constantly updating a section of their website called the back room and that's a place where they get older pens maybe in trade or maybe I don't know how they acquire these pens some are modern some are vintage they sell very fast but they're reasonably priced sometimes I'll just go on and see if there are any old vintage pens that I'm interested in or modern pens that they happen to have for sale and then every Tuesday they do a super special on some pen. They had a really great price on a Visconti um, that was just beautiful. Their website isn't totally modernized or super user-friendly. It's kind of old school, like the pen shop, which I love about them. So it took me a little while to get in the swing of things and navigate it, but now that I'm on board with it, I get the weekly emails about the ink special and the super specials on Tuesday. They do a really good job of like sucking you in and getting you to go back and see what might be on sale. They also gave me a beautiful Esterbrook candle as a gift. One of the owners gave it to me and they had recently hosted a pen show and Marvin gave me this big teddy bear, this antique teddy bear with glass eyes, well this antique style teddy bear with like posable limbs that they had given to everybody who had come to their show. So I'm going to try to go back. I think he said they do one like the first week in December. They have another like a holiday show. But definitely give them a visit online and in person if you're ever in New York City. And thanks again for watching. I'll see you back real soon. Bye.